Hi, I'm Everett. Welcome back to the shop. Uh, a while back I was uh, doing the first chips on the shaper and what I had done was I had just really bolted the uh, the vise down to the table uh, roughly square, didn't really do much for tramming it in or getting it in line or anything. It wasn't really checking for accuracy or anything. I just wanted to throw some chips and make sure the thing worked. Well, before I start really using the shaper, um, I do need to fix up the uh, vise a bit and make it more usable and you know more trustworthy. I'm hoping it can be, but uh, again, I got it at a garage sale for eight bucks, so I get I don't know what to really expect from it for uh, for accuracy. Uh, it surprised me to begin with just because of the fact that you don't normally see machining tools around here at garage sales. It's just not as common. So. Here's the vise again. Um, now, again, I'm not sure how uh, square this face on the bottom here, at the bottom of the jaws, is with the uh, fixed jaw. Oh, excuse me, we'll have to figure that out. Um, it's kind of grungy. It's, you know, the paint's dinged up. It's scratched here and there, whatever. Um, I don't know who Peregrine Machine Works was. Uh, but, I mean, chances are, judging by the age of the unit here, and I couldn't find a Peregrine Machine Works in Western Canada in uh, any sort of Google search, um, I don't think that they want it back. So, um, yeah, so what we'll have to do is we'll have to strip it down, um, clean it up. I want to get rid of the paint on it and uh, paint it the same color as the shaper to make it match. Uh, it's old enough that it looks almost period authentic, so it kind of goes with the motif. Um, as far as, uh, yeah, as far as a maker's mark, again, I've looked it over. I don't see a stamping on it. I don't see any sort of name brand, anything like that. So, I mean, who knows? Maybe something will come out once we take the paint off because maybe it was repainted at one point in its life. I don't know. So, yeah, so that's our project. We're going to tear this guy down, clean it up, make it usable again, hopefully. I yeah, hope you find it interesting. Um, I've also got another bench vise that my father-in-law gave me. Um, at some point, it's going to need to clean up as well. Uh, but I know that some people want to see the shaper do some more work first. So let's, let's get the shaper up and running again. We'll try first by uh, taking off this little plate here. There's a little plate with two um, hex head, uh, or hex, Allen head bolts here. They are 3 16 heads. take that off first and see what that gets us because really there there doesn't seem to be a whole lot to holding this thing together all right so that's loose oh all right let's just take this piece out our lead screw with the plate that it's mounted in <clears throat> and I can see a bunch of grunge in there already there we go, there's our lead screw. Yeah, covered in a bunch of grunge and swarf from who knows how many years ago. So will you slide off now? Oh ho! Ah! No. Haha! <laughs> well, that's hidden. What do we have in here? Oh, okay. So I'm looking in here, and there's that little block down there for the. Uh, for the lead screw to go into. So she's not going to slide off of there. At the way it is, maybe we'll try taking the movable jaw off. All right, movable jaw. Ugh! Movable jaw comes off. There we are. Still looking for any sort of maker's mark, and I don't see any. Ugh. Oh dear. That's that's gross. All right. Yep. Yep, just a little quarter course bolt. Very interesting. No head marks on the heads or anything. Yeah, there's our uh, nut for the lead screw. Threads don't look that bad. I mean, it's gross and has a bit of rust in it, but not that bad. That's pretty grim. 
So we wiped it down a little bit um, with some, uh, well, just use brake cleaner. And then we'll just take and There we go. Like I say, just to try to get the high spots off. Yeah. See, what has me concerned is with the little square in here. I can see a little bit of light at the top of that jaw. Not much, but it's there. Huh. Well, what are we gonna do about that? What I may have to do is a little bit of fiddling on the face uh, or the mount for this face here to get it into to get it into square. Oh. Well, okay, that might be a problem. That's pretty gross. Wow, okay. Huh. I mean, you can see that there. That's pretty nasty. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna take a moment here, get this cleaned up on this part here, and then we'll go from there. So we're down to these three parts, which are the only painted portions. Um, the, the base, the slide, and then the, well, I guess the screw base itself, uh, jack screw. Um, I finally got myself a cheap pair of uh, snap ring pliers, because all my good ones are at work. Hmm. That snap ring deformed as it came off. So this comes off of there. So now with this piece removed, uh, we now have all three of the painted parts. Um, I can now use the paint stripper, same stuff as I used on the shaper. We're going to pull the paint off of this thing and clean it up. So, yes, I realize I don't have any gloves on, but I also don't intend to touch this stuff. Now my son is across the shop, and this stuff here actually doesn't have a super high smell to it. It actually doesn't smell all that nasty. Hmm. Be right there. Somebody dropped his wrench. He's only, he's only two years old, but uh, it's never too early to get him playing with wrenches. So there we go. I'll let that sit and let the uh, stuff work on it for a while. It says minimum of 15 minutes, but I'll let it work longer. Really? You think so? How long do you think I should let it run? Hmm? Hey, buddy? How long should I let it run? Okay, we'll let it soak for a while. Well, that took a little longer than I thought it would, so um, I figured I'd leave it for 15, 20 minutes or whatever and then come back, but uh, yeah, it kind of, little man kind of got a little fussy and then we wound up going inside and he's been, he's been kind of clingy lately, I don't know why, but uh, anyway, so I just figured, heck with it, I came back out, uh, put another layer of the uh, slime on there and then just set it underneath the cover here. This is an old cake, um, yeah, cake tray from, or cake cover from a cake tray. And that, well, hopefully has kept it from drying out too much. But that allowed, theoretically, the, uh, the goo to do its job, which it appears to have done. Well, that's not working too badly either. You can see some areas where it got a little thin, but it's still coming off. Yeah, some of these areas, the paint stripper must have been a little bit thinner. If any of you are at all chemical engineers and uh, know how the paint stripper chemistry works, I'd be all ears. I'm kind of curious. It's just amazing you can just let it, you know, lay the slime on there 
let it sit for, well in this case was over an hour, and it uh, lifts it right off. I'll give it a, I'll give it a thorough cleaning um, afterward with some uh, denatured alcohol, but uh, yeah, that's not so bad at all. That little guy's good to go. A little wire brushing and some uh, alcohol. And on to the main piece. Okay, so after, well, half an hour, 20 minutes or so of scraping and wire brushing and such, it's coming. I just, I know that you'd probably have other things you'd rather do with your life than watch somebody scrape paint. I'm just giving it a brushing over top of the trash can. Trying to get most of the residual debris off. Getting there. One thing that I find fascinating on this is that Although on the back it has some swirl marks from obviously a large diameter milling machine of some type, but right here there are crosshatch marks as well as on this pad here and well back here looks like it got hit with a grinder, uh, like an angle grinder, but what that tells me is it looks like a shaper was actually used in making of this vise. So again that maybe that'll help date it. Again, if anybody out there has ever used a vise that looked like this in years past in shops you've worked at, if you know what brand it is, please let me know. I can't find any maker's marks on it any whatsoever. So anyway, uh, I'm going to finish uh, sanding this up with some uh, Scotch-Brite final cleaning up. And then we're going to do some measurements and a couple modifications to this. Uh, first off, this uh, flat surface here, the, the bed or if you will of the vise, um, this is where your work sits and this becomes your registering surface, right? So this here has to be flat. Everything else has to be in relation to this. So I don't have a, um, I don't have a precision straight edge. Closest thing I have is this old brown and sharp uh, height gauge. And uh, I mean, I have, a, I have a start as well, like a newer one, but this guy here is pretty old. Now, this front face here, I have checked against the surface plate with a flashlight, and um, I don't see any light underneath it, so that's about as good as I'm going to get for my shop here. And what I do is, what I did was I set it on here, and then, like I did this earlier, I shot, I shot a flashlight underneath, and I don't see, I don't see any light coming out from this side, on, on either side, so... I can be at least reasonably happy that this surface here is flat. I wish I could say the same about the base because I don't know if you can hear it. It rocks. That's <laughs> rocking is not a good thing, you know, as opposed to, you know, with something when something rocks, often that's a good connotation, especially at a concert. This kind this time not a not a chance. That's not a good thing. It rocks there. So what I did was I took and um, I took the draw file or the file again and draw filed it and so gently there. I don't know if you can see the shiny bits. It's definitely high right here and right here. I just ran a file across this way. Now what we're going to do as well is we're going to take and measure to see exactly how bad it is as far as being out of uh, out of flat. Because if it's not going to be in uh, parallel to this surface, it's not going to be useful for us. It could be a drill press vise maybe, but even then, what we can do is we can lay it on the table like this. Say so it's not nice and flat, no rocking there. And then we're going to take our, uh, uh, our surface gauge here that uh, Doug gave us. Thanks again, Doug. I'll take, the, take it with the uh, dial gauge or dial indicator mount on it call that our zero. Now this surface here has been hit with a milling machine so there's going to be slight variation as I go along and I'm <laughs> I'm sure I'm doing something wrong here so by all means I don't take offense if you make a comment but uh, 
right about there is zero. So come up here. That there, right, right there is plus 2.5. About seven and a half there. Right here is minus two. That's minus, oh, yeah, minus four right there. And that's about 2.5. Right there is zero, six, minus three. So as you can see, as you can see from the uh, from the map there, the rough little map, it, the numbers are all over the place. Uh, part of me wants to just say to heck with it and uh, just save up the pennies and buy a new vice. But there's also a part of me that, well, is partly cheap and partly thinks that the look of this thing is cool, even if I can't find a maker's mark, and it does sort of match the period uh, look of the machine itself. So I'd like to see if we can salvage this thing. It's going to be a bit of a challenge, and I don't know if we're actually going to be able to. But, uh, I mean, if you're all up for coming along for the ride, then uh, we'll see if we can make this thing work. I'm not going to bother painting it unless it can actually be fixed. So as far as trying to figure out how to make this thing work, um, what was actually kind of fun is Eldon was over the other day and we were scratching heads. And I think that between the two of us, we may have come up with a way to do this. So I've set the vise up in the uh, mill here. I've covered the table a little bit here with some paper towels just to try to stop most of the shrapnel from getting embedded in it. Um, the way is, the, as far as the y-axis, it's not going to go anywhere, so I'll wipe it off after. Um, I've also partly covered the lathe with uh, an old shirt. Um, the, uh, just trying to keep you know, the flying bits of cast iron to a minimum as far as getting in the way of things. I'm going to try fly cutting this. I know there are probably a number of you in the, uh, out there watching who are going to scream, no, but I mean, we'll see. It, it'll either work or it'll horribly fail. If it horribly fails, I'm out eight bucks. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to complain too much. So I have the mill set as low of speed as I can. It's 120 RPM. Still gives us, at, on a seven inch uh, radius here, or seven inch diameter because that's what it is sticking out this far which I know is a little too much stick out on a fly cutter I'm gonna give it a try um, I'm gonna go very light cuts but uh, you know that'll still be like 220 surface feet per minute so uh, it's still a little bit hot for cast iron but if I take light cuts we'll see what it'll do uh, again if this doesn't work I'm out eight bucks and I gotta go buy a new one but uh, you know I'd rather not buy a new one if I don't have to because this is roughly our zero point, same with there, I'm going to touch off, and because this is actually up by seven and a half thou, I'm going to touch off, then back the cutter off. Probably back it off to about, you know, what it re when it reads like minus four or whatever, and then take a skim. Oh, there we go. There's our zero. That's minus four. That's like I say, the table's already fully. Uh, it's already fully moved to that end, so we're going to move this way. So we start getting some contact. Oh, there we go. I can hear it. Just touching. I can see right where I was draw filing. I can see where it's starting to cut there. It's starting to take a bite. Small one. All right. Yeah, my suspicion is even though it says minus four, I'm probably minus more. We're at minus one, which theoretically would give us three more thousands than where we were before. We should start taking a bit more off the off now. Oh, where are we hitting now? Oh, okay, on the back. Let's 
So what this should do is theoretically get us down to the uh, being in parallel with the actual bed of the vise. Bottom surface, I guess. That really should, really should look up the proper term for that. Sad to say, it does look like there's a wee bit of chatter in the lines or in the lines that are cutting. This isn't, you know, one can't be too surprised about it. I guess with the fly cutter this far out, that's kind of why I'm getting a bit more scratch on the back pass. Let's add a bit more feed. because as I'm cutting along here I can actually see some little dings and imperfections in the surface come out. Wow is this base ever warped. I wonder why. See up at the front edge up here, it's starting to tick there, even though it's minus four, right in between that high spot and that high spot. Wow, is this thing ever warped? I'm actually fairly happy as far as a roughing pass. There is a bit of tool chatter, but I was also taking like three, three and a half thousandths on that one. <clears throat> the scratch, we'll see if we can get out. But um, as I say, I'll take at least one, if not two more passes at about one to one and a half thousandths. Um, honestly, I'm getting a bit more hopeful we're going to be able to use this thing. Now hopefully this is our finished pass, so I'm going to go very lightly on the feed. This one is going to take a while. Getting down to the end of the last pass. This is a long time cranking. So I wanted to make a nice uh, smooth finish at the end. Oh. Yeah, my arm's my arm is sore. I'll admit it's not surface ground. But uh, in my defense, it is actually smoother than, uh, than it was when I got it. So I like it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this out of the vise, clean up this thing, uh, get it all vacuumed and wipe down the ways again. Um, try to, well, get some of the <laughs> cast iron dust off of myself. And then, uh, then we'll set back up over on the surface plate. So... Um, Overall, uh, the uh, initial results I, I look promising. It doesn't, it doesn't rock anymore. Um, as far as the actual, uh, as the actual working surface is concerned, there we got zero. 
That's, yeah, that's within a thousandth there. Come on, there. Yeah, we're pretty close to within a thousandth on this side. Um, I'm happy with that. Uh, next step is going to be uh, cleaning up this surface here so that we can make the, um, uh, the fixed jaw square to the bed or the, well, working surface, whatever here. That's not going to be a job for tonight. Um, I think I've had enough for one day. <laughs> yeah, got home from work and had dinner and then uh, got the little man and better half off to bed and came out to play for a while and I'm tired. Time for bed. As far as uh, this video is concerned, I'm just going to pause it. Um, I'm happy with where we're at right now. Uh, bottom surface is now finally uh, true to the top surface here, the working surface. Just need to clean up the mount for the uh, uh, fixed jaw and make sure it's perpendicular to the working surface. But that'll be another night. Uh, anyway, I uh, just wanted to say thanks to everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, thanks for coming by. Uh, thank you everybody for the comments and the likes and the emails. It's been it's been really cool to hear from everybody who's uh, You know who's joined in so until we get on to part two, which shouldn't be too long. I hope I um, hope you're all doing well, and I'll see you then